Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about artificial insemination and uh, small ruminants. Mostly concentrating on goats. There are some uh, AIs doing in sheep. We have a lot of questions now from clients that have got just into the, the sheep and goat business. Well, can you AI animals? And yes, we can. However, there's a couple things as a producer who's wanting to do artificial insemination that you need to have to start off with. First of all, you really do need to have two important things. First of all, the availability of the semen. Here is a half cc straw that's been spent of, of goat semen. And you have to have it stored in liquid nitrogen. So you need a semen tank. Semen tanks are, are, are what they store frozen semen in. They're stored in liquid nitrogen, not the liquid nitrogen that you'd put on a pasture or anything like that, but the liquid nitrogen that's a frozen liquid nitrogen that they use in medical hospitals and also in, in welding supplies. So when anybody asks me, can you AI? Yes, I can, but it's your responsibility to provide the semen um, and have the semen there because I just don't, out of the blue, have semen to every breed of goat and everything. Another thing that if you're going to start doing AI to improve your genetics of your herd or, or, or help your biosecurity program where you're not bringing in animals that could bring disease in, you'll need to have the AI equipment. And you can buy these, purchase these as kits. Uh, one place that I've purchased all mine is from Biogenics Limited. They're out of Idaho. They're a semen collection agency where they collect goat semen, sheep semen, deer semen all over the country. Um, so we just buy a kit from there. There's other places, Valley Vet, you can buy a goat AI kit. But when you get the kit, sometimes it'll come with a box. If not, just take an old toolbox to store it in there. Some of the things that you'll be getting in your, your AI kit is that you'll be getting uh, a thaw jar because when you take the semen out of the semen tank and we'll demonstrate this later on you you have to, to thaw it at a certain temperature between 95 and 97 degrees uh, also you'll have a thermometer that comes with it you have to have some kind of thaw also you'll have various sizes of vaginal speculums and which you will insert into the vagina of the, of the doe. And that way you can actually physically see the cervix that you're gonna be inseminating. Along with that, there's various uh, light sources that you can use. I actually have a little pin light right here that I just clip on to my, my speculum once I get it inside the doe. Uh, other people just use a piece of a pipe that's rounded, smoothened off, and use that for speculum. We do, and I don't have any here right now, use a KY jelly or some kind of, of lubricant to make it a lot easier for that to go in. In sheep, they use the duckbill uh, speculum that's inserted in and spread out like that so you can get a better visualization and in sheep too, because their cervixes and vagina is so loose, you actually have to grasp, and you have a set of forceps that you actually grasp the cervix with that and bring it back to where you're AI. Also in, in your kit, you'll have a insemination gun. The insemination gun will be what you'll use to implant the semen into your, your dough. Also with that, you have um, some sheaths, AI sheaths that go on the outside after you place your semen in there on the outside of your AI gun so that you can proceed to AI your dough. We get a lot of these long cotton tip applicators because a lot of times when you're trying to artificially inseminate a dough, what happens is that there's so much mucus around the cervical os that 
you can't see what you're doing. So you can take a swab, swab her out, and, and then you can better visualize what you're doing. The whole process of this is something that you have to learn by repetition, repetition, repetition. Uh, so that's your basic kit that you'll get that when you get your AI kit in. Now what we're going to talk a little bit about is when to breed the doe, how to breed the doe, uh, some of the techniques we use to, to, uh, to breed does. Uh, and I refer to does because I breed more goats than I do sheep. Uh, you can breed small ruminants on their natural heat cycle. Sheep and goats are short daylight breeders. So that means by nature, they're going to cycle more in the fall and the winter when the daylights are shorter. So you can observe them in heat. Goats are really vocal when they're in heat. Normally what we, we know that these does will ovulate 18 to 24 hours after they come into heat. So what we do is if we've observed one in heat in the morning, we'll artificially breed them in the evening after we finish up chores 12 to 14 hours later, and then we will attempt to do another breeding six hours later. So we'd like to try to get two breedings on each one. Now, other people say, well, I don't know when she comes in heat. We don't have any males around to stimulate them. What can we do then? There is another, another method of drug inducing that we use. It's a, it's called a cedar. It's basically a controlled interuterine device that is proge progesterone impregnated to keep her from coming into heat. It's, um, you actually have an applicator here that you can put the cedar in, place it in her, and you leave it in that. Our protocol is to place it in on, on day zero. On day 11, we'll come in and give an injection of lutalice, which is a prostaglandin. What prostaglandins do is lice the corpus luteum so that she can come into heat. So we do that 11 days later. Ideally, you like to do it at the exact same time 11 days later as when you put the cedars in. So if you put the cedars in at six o'clock in the morning, six o'clock 11 days later, you give a shot of lutalize. The following day, on day 12, at the same time, we give a shot of PG-600. PG-600 has in it uh, GnRH, which is gonadotrophin releasing hormone, and it also has in it pregnant mare, pregnant mare serum. Both of these will help with her to go ahead and ovulate. So what we're trying to do is keep her out of heat, then we're trying to bring her in heat with lutalize and PG-600. After we do that, you can either breed on observing for heat, or a lot of people will just breed 52 hours later and just AI hey, them like that. So two ways, natural, natural heat cycles, doing the AI on those, higher conception rate than drug-induced out-of-season breedings as well. Of course, none of the AI techniques that we use can beat the conception rate of a live cover from a from a stud. So anyway, we're trying to improve genetics, taking the risk, however, that we may not get a conception and we may have to try it again. So that's pretty much that. We're gonna go over with a, a doe, how we mount, a, put them on a stand, bring them up, kind of go through, walk through the whole process of doing the uh, thawing the semen and AI in the dough next.